Uh, so everyone, meet Shivani. She's a documentation manager at Aristocrat Technologies, and she's worked uh, for over 17 years uh, in, in the realm of technical writing. She's currently leading a global team of skilled technical writers at Aristocrat, and she's successfully designed and implemented documentation processes and strategies here and, and, and at some of her other uh, in some of her other roles. Um, Shivani, thanks again uh, for, for your willingness to to share with us, uh, bestow upon us your your knowledge today. We're we're really excited to have you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Travis, for this wonderful introduction. And I'm equally uh, excited uh, to speak about uh, what I have learned throughout. So, yep, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, yep. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm pleased to meet you all. Uh, and sorry for a bit uh, delay. Um, in this presentation, I will speak about my journey from unstructured to structured authoring. Um, so before we start, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Shivani Gaushik. I have 17 years of experience in documentation and currently leading the team at Aristocrat Techno Technologies Sydney. And I have uh, exposure to finance, industrial, automation, security, and gaming domains so far, and uh, I enjoyed all of them. Um, and uh, at personal side, I love to travel and uh, explore various cultures. So uh, today's agenda is that uh, we will know about structured authoring. Um, I'll talk about documentation survey, uh, grooming requirements, prioritization, market research, strategy. Um, I will also talk about content audit and what all you need to take care of uh, while you do the audit, POC, funding, and how the implementation goes. So I will talk about my experience and the insights I gained while transitioning from unstructured to structured authoring. Um, if you are someone who is planning to migrate or want to know about the process of migration, you will get to know a lot. This will help you in uh, planning the migration. Uh, in upcoming slides, I will talk about some questions that you should ask yourself before migrating at various stages of migration. Uh, before you start, you need to think why you want to make topic-based authoring a part of your content strategy. Data is one of the method of topic-based authoring, although multiple methods for accomplishing topic-based authoring exist. Uh, we choose to implement data on our, as our method. My focus uh, remains on telling you about our learning and the process that worked good for us and we got success in accomplishing our goal. So what's structure authoring? By definition, structure authoring is a topic-based authoring. It is a workflow that lets you define and enforce consistent information organization in documents. Uh, topic-based authoring is a modular approach to content creation. So let's quickly discuss the well-known differences between the topic-based authoring versus narrative. In structured authoring, rules control content and structure. We can set up various authoring rules. We have schematron taxonomies that control the content, resulting fewer human errors and consistent documentation. Also, the content becomes highly searchable due to robust metadata capabilities. In unstructured authoring, no such rule exists. Authors rely on the defined uh, standards um, and difficulty searching content because it is tied to the layout. When it, structured authoring is topic-based authoring, individual topics can be disassembled as needed for specific reader purpose, as each one has its own context. Whenever the, uh, we're in, uh, in the unstructured authoring is a narrative form of writing, content flows from beginning to the end. The other difference is uh, topics are mixed and reused in different contexts. Uh, the single source of truth enables reuse of chunks of content that eliminates duplicate efforts in the, in the structured authoring. Wherein in the unstructured form, reuse is difficult. Authors need to copy paste the content and resulting human errors. In structured um, form of writing, collaboration is easy uh, because since authors work on top topics. On the other hand, collaboration is tough since content is tied to the layout and authors usually have one source uh, file to work on. Last and not the least, style sheet handles uh, the formatting in structured format. XML backend architecture powers the content. 
wherein in narrative form the authoring and formatting are tightly coupled authors need to take care of formatting a lot i mean it's a full time work task to just look at the formatting is everything correct in the published output so let's also uh, know about some of the benefits uh, first of all reusability information uh, is written in small topics to promote reuse across multiple context and output media the other is collaboration uh, structured enforcement and this information is detailed to be easily authored and is readable and coherent information is consistent accessible each topic have a specific subject and intent so because before we write we have to understand what we want to clarify in this particular topic so it is quite clear and uh, the quality uh, we have more good quality and consistency because of the rules that are uh, that are working in the background speed and efficiency scalability to serve more uh, teams and projects this is kind of intangible benefit single sourcing uh, quicker book creation with more options for the types of books to publish tailored to the user needs also localization for example do you want to uh, generate two different output out of one source that caters to different language maybe just for an instance british english and american english so you can create your own localization terms and can uh, have multiple outputs based on different locations so i will talk about how my organization moved the mountain and reached the goal of structure authoring uh, so to begin with we need to first uh, you know think of the problems so what issues you need to think of what issues you are currently dealing with examples are like do you need to provide different output for one single document and you have to maintain various uh, various source for it do you need to generate customized content for various user resulting creating multiple copies do you want to reuse content um, across books or maybe collaboration is a challenge consistency is a challenge are you spending too much time on the formatting and look and feel of the document think of um, the ideal situation compare it with the reality think of what you need to do to be at the ideal situation what will be the consequences this is i mean this is really important part where you need to focus because to fix something you need to understand what needs to be fixed so you really need to give a thought on the problems that you are facing you have to need, you need to ask where is questions to yourself documentation survey as we discussed in the previous slide that we need to focus on the problem area first you as an author have given thoughts to the problems that you are facing now it's time to hear from others survey will serve the purpose so survey can be used to determine users thoughts and experiences surveys offer precise data about people's beliefs and actions if appropriately conducted the results will help you to make informed decisions it will also help you to set benchmark data you can list down some common issues that you as a author and your customer are facing you can also have focused group discussions to understand issues the users are facing it is very important to ask the right question in a right way so plan appropriately draft your questions know your audience send the survey collate the result and gather the benchmark data stakeholder involvement it is very in, important to involve your stakeholders because end of the day you would require funding and approval for using new tools and methods identify the stakeholders at the early stage of the initiative discuss the initiative explain how it impacts customer experience talk about accessibility searchability multimedia and consistency explain the problems and emphasize the solutions how it saves time and effort wherein time is money talk about the opportunity lost what we are missing if we are not using it pay focus on efficiency quality and customer experience explain why the investment is worth it talk about the current cost including opportunity lost leadership like to hear facts and figures if you provide them both you won't face issues by convincing your leadership 
you are one step closer to your goal. Now let's see what's next. Groom requirements. You must groom the requirements to achieve the end goal. You should know what all you aim to achieve. First of all, author requirements. So you need to first of all think about yourself. As authors, what is most important to you? Is it reuse? Do you want to reuse a lot of content across products? Is it single sourcing? Do you want to create multiple outputs and, outputs and documents for various customers from a single source? Is collaboration a priority? Automatic audit trail of draft publishing, publication and revisions? Maybe check in, check out, version control capabilities, so work doesn't get overwritten. Is efficiency important? Helping the authors to provide content in more standardized modular way. Do you are looking for ease to use, like accessibility of content, cross-referencing, linking across multiple documents, ability to customize content um, if necessary for business requirements. And uh, for example, custom cover pages, back cover for published books. So, uh, or maybe any automatic uh, font configuration or automatically uh, you are getting the icons for notes and everything. So think about, do are you looking, looking for ease to use as well? And most important training, how complex the tool is, how much time it will take to train authors and reviewers because if, if the tool is very complex, then again, the transition will be difficult. So focus on the training part as well. Gather all the requirements, uh, all important author requirements for you. So now uh, look at the review requirements. You gathered what you need. Now you need to gather review requirements, what your SME needs. You can have focused group discussion with SMEs to know the pain areas, uh, like ease to use. They want a tool where they can easily provide feedback, understand the current process, how they are providing feedback now. Uh, are they looking for collaboration? Do multiple reviewers want to review the document at the same time and want to collaborate? They want to see each other feedback because most of the time it happens like um, SME has provided one, SME has provided one feedback wherein the other uh, SME has some other thought about it. So do they want to look at all the feedback at one place? So think about it. Ask them this question. Workflow. Uh, the document should have a defined workflow of the review process like we have for code reviews. Do you want a, a particular workflow for the review so that it automatically moves to the next uh, stage? Once, For example, once it's passed from peer review, it automatically goes to SME review. Do you, or are you looking for something like that as well in your tool? Now, let's see what customers uh, ask is. So is accessibility. Uh, is asked. They want the content to be accessible. Is there a need to access the content through various devices like mobile, tablet, or computer? Is the content required in online or offline mode? Is searchability needed? You have the content and it is not searchable. It is of no use. So they cannot find what they need. So is that a focus area for you? Or maybe uh, filtering. They want to filter con content based on their requirements. Or maybe customized information. They need customized information. They just, for example, they just want topics that are required to accomplish a task and not the whole manual. So we need to think about these as well. Technical requirements. It is also very important to gather the technical requirements. You are going to create and publish the content and you would want your content in a secure environment. Focus on authentication, security and hosting solutions. Do you need anything additional to set up the a new system to think about it as well. Prioritization. Uh, by now, you have all requirements, authors, reviewers, uh, customers, and technical. List down the most important requirements that caters to all authors, customers, and reviewers. List down the items with higher ROI. Pay attention to the technical requirements. You would want your content uh, to be secure enough. So by now you have gathered all the requirements that you have in your mind. Uh, now, strategy. It's essential to define a strategy. You must build a comprehensive plan to achieve a goal. When you define goals, ensure you break them into short-term and long-term goals. Try to map your content strategy goals with your organization goals. When moving to structured authoring, although there is 
a lot of work to be done upfront, but the cost reductions down the line could be significant. While you strategize this initiative, you may need to pay focus on training and resources. You may need additional headcount if you do not have enough bandwidth in the current setup. If you are a single writer, you would definitely need additional help and prioritize your DIFOT deliveries. And leadership would not deprioritize the DIFOT work. So you need to plan thoroughly and communicate clearly. First of all, content audit. It's an essential part of the journey. It helps you understand the flaws in your content. So audit the source. Audit the source files to see if you can automate the conversion. For example, in MS Word, have you applied the style bold to your content or just use a predefined bold option? Identify discrepancies. Are you able, uh, are your table uh, consistent? Consist consistent? Is your heading formatting um, consistent in one and the various tools you are using? Are you using any style for cross-reference and so on? So think about all these uh, things. Audit template. Do you have a common pro uh, proprietary information for all the documents? Do you have a, a set template? Do you have index, glossary, table of figures in your documents? Uh, branding. Are you using different uh, front covers for various document types and brands? If you need various styles for different brands, what are you, your require? What are your different requirements? Are uh, there any uh, parts that you can have in common for various uh, brands so that you can reuse? Um, list various output types. What different uh, output types do you generate? So think about all these things before you take a decision on the tool. Market research. Perform thorough market research. Research the available uh, solutions in the market that you can use. We selected, for example, we selected data. Tool comparison, research the available tools and shortlist the tools for your requirement. We discussed the requirements in earlier slides. Slides Request tool demos, list down the features they have, then tool evaluation, uh, evaluate the shortlisted tools and score them based on whether the tool suits most of your requirements, cost, and how much training it would need to start this with this new tool. Vendors. You may need to build your own style sheet to address uh, branding and automate, uh, automate the publishing process. Since it is technical, it would be a good idea to outsource and take help from professionals who have mastered this area. They can also help you create information model uh, and all the rules that goes in the background of authoring. If you want to automate the conversion process, look for vendors who can automate the conversion. Get quotations from various vendors, check for their work, and ask for their requirements for performing the conversion for you. Set a discussion time with them to understand the process uh, or maybe limitations uh, and support they would be providing. Because if you even migrate the content, there will be lim uh, limitations in migration. Some things you have to handle manually. Training, not the least, since um, it is all new, you will definitely need to train yourself and your team to enter in the whole new world. It is essential um, for the success of this initiative. POC, it's time to get your hand dirty now. So uh, create test cases. The test cases you want to run, example, single sourcing, reuse, referencing, keywords, select the content or sections that you want, uh, that you plan to use for the POC. Preferably use the same content and scenarios while you perform POC on various tools, because then only you will be able to take a wise decision on uh, results uh, from the various tools. Run test cases on various tools, test features on of uh, various tools and rate them. Some tools will be more user friendly than others. What's your preference? Test the tool for ease of use, usability, flexibility, like integration with other apps, scalability, and localization. Gather metrics for all the above. Rate the tool on all the features that you have tested. Gather metrics. Short it at least uh, three tools for final comparison. Vendor evaluation. Compare the metrics gathered during the POC. Uh, request for proposals and uh, from various vendors. Uh, compare the proposals, score the vendor, uh, vendors based on the RFP and tool comparison metrics that you did 
in previous slide. Rate and shortlist the vendors. You may select one that addresses most of your high priority requirements and is also easy on the pocket. Finalize the tool. Based on all the research, uh, finalize the vendor. You may need to perform the similar activity if you are uh, shortlisting vendors for converting content and creating style sheet for you. Funding. Funds matter, and everyone would agree to it. You need to pay specific focus as now you would be dealing with numbers. Kickoff. This process may vary. Some organizations uh, have a, a straightforward process. Some may require a lot of background work. But in general, you should align the initiative timeline with the organization's budget timeline because uh, this would be a new request that the leadership have to add to the fiscal year. So give them enough time to include the request in the budget, meet with the stakeholders, formalize the process. Uh, show the project timeline that you have defined in the strategy phase. Explain how it aligns with the overall organization goal. Get details related to business case approvers. Uh, you should also need details of finance partner, IT, and business partners. Set expectations related to some time allocation for this initiative. While you show the POC results, explain the background activity and how you may need to allocate time to for this initiative. You may uh, set the allocation percentage for the initiative and update the leadership if it impacts your overall life for delivery. Don't shy away uh, from asking for additional headcount, probably a contract position to handle this tra uh, transi uh, transition task. Uh, you may hire someone who have exposure to uh, structured authoring. This will help you in a great deal. Business case, create the business case, get it reviewed from the uh, concerned parties and get re uh, the required approvals. You may have a set business uh, case template in your organization that you can use. Um, explain the proposal, the scope, explain the needs, list the benefits, list both tangible and intangible benefits and mention the time frame. For it, example, uh, in how much time uh, you will start observing the benefits. Provide the overall project timeline, risk assessment, List any risk that you uh, have identified. Uh, if your organization does not have XML, XSLD, XSLFO, and ANT capabilities, you will probably need to bring additional resources in-house or, con uh, or contact with a service provider to optimize your setup. Uh, resources required, the money, time, and manpower. Don't forget to add budget request for training uh, and then send the business case for approval once all done. So now, you have done the background work. Uh, now let's talk about the real fun, uh, the implementation. Training, first thing that you need to focus is on training, uh, you and your team, learn about structure authoring in detail. It's a mindset change. It's just not about the tool. You need to think in a different perspective as you need to create modular chunks of information. So you have to, you have to, shift your mindset a bit. And as a starting point, go through the data style guide or any available material, um, online and offline trainings, also blogs. There are a lot of blogs that you can read and get insights from various fellow authors. So it's very helpful. Just look around and see the material available online. Benchmark data. So gather survey data um, that you conducted uh, uh, the documentation survey, uh, the current, and any past survey feedback if you have. Set action items and areas that you want to address in the current implementation. Pick up the area that will fix feedback from all, like authors, customers, and reviewers. Document the data. It is advisable to create it in a presentable format so that you can demonstrate it to the stakeholders. List your goals, maybe at least two areas that you aim to fix and are positive about seeing improvement in the following survey after the implementation. I am model. You would require dedicated members in the team who can actively work on information model and test it during the implementation. In case of single member team, it is really important to strategize this need, um, build a requirement for the I model, first of all. Then clarify the roles and responsibility and specify the information type like audiences, metadata, and attributes. Specify the taxonomy and schematron rules that you want to address. Set rules for the block and inline elements. 
any specific rules like any specific rules you would like for the list items for example um, single numbered item is not allowed uh, rules related to nesting then also something related to applying rules for the inline elements like ui control you cannot just use a bold maybe you have to use a ui control tag define localization requirements analyze and design content structures linking and use strategy think about that as well and then finally once you have done as you uh, do the implementation you have to test the i model uh, along with the transition and migration process since the auto model is changed you need to revisit processes as well analyze the current process define the change in the processes like peer review sma review publishing so finalize the processes if there is any change you also need to think about changes in the release and branching processes because if you have changed the tool uh, then definitely there is change in the release and branching processes as well and then and if you didn't didn't had any release and branching process then you have to establish new and uh, define the change management plan like how you cannot just go ahead and make any change in any of the processes so to change anything you have to define how you have to go through the change and how the process looks like for changing the plan or any of the processes conversion uh, by now you know that how you are going to convert the files in xml format are you outsourcing it automating it or doing it on your own while you define timeline ensure you keep dipod deliveries in your, in the mind uh, identify books that you want to convert identify the total page count for the conversion prioritize the books if outsourcing then finalize the contracts the scope of work probity uh, define the overall timeline for completing the milestone so if pre conversion uh, so if you are um, automating the uh, automating the um, um, migration then it becomes really critical to define the pre conversion and post conversion strategy prefer prepare your files for the conversion uh, gather images used in the files you may need to mark the image path for the structure defined in your, info, your information model uh, if you have used various image formats in your documents earlier then it's a great opportunity to standardize use same file format for all images and remove extra blank pages you may remove the front and back matter if you are automating the conversion because uh, if um, before because if you are outsourcing and automating the conversion then uh, it may add to your um, uh, the total page count and uh, will increase the um, cost so you may remove the black pages and front and back cover uh, map character and paragraph styles with inline elements as defined in your information model if you are automating uh, the process you need to test on initial files and verify if the outcome is per your requirements if they if they are not coming as you expected it then you may need to again change the migration rules and uh, run it through a few more files post conversion while you do the post conversion cleanup you need to take care of a lot of things because though you can automate but you cannot automate everything fix any missing and broken links a review and fix any tag discrepancies fix any front cover discrepancies if there fix table content if in case merging uh, is not done properly uh, add keywords because you cannot automate this process you have to manually add keywords in each and every topic fix any heading discrepancies if you made any structural decisions for the information model reuse so we are now discussing the most important thing at least for my organization this is the most important thing that we thought that oh, structured authoring is very important for us reuse it is uh, the uh, driving factor for i so far i know for many organization to move to structured authoring define a uh, first of all define a reuse strategy what you want to address first how granular you, uh, you want to go at the moment for example start with reusing the copyright information in front covers and footers uh, you can reuse at map or topic and element level it would be best if you can start with the topic level reuse because it's easy define folder structure for placing reusable file it is essential when collaborating because uh, so that everyone knows where are uh, where the common files are placed so that the, everyone can reuse the file in your team measure reuse define the measurement criteria 
how you want to measure it, how you plan to calculate the reusable file. Some tools have inbuilt reports that are highly convenient to gather the data. And then figure out if you can generate any report through your tool to see duplicate content occurrences. So if you have any duplicate content, you can plan how to you know, avoid it and can reuse it at various occurrences. Publishing. You have all your content set. Now think if any change is required in your publishing process. Identify any process change required for publishing. Notify users if there is any change in accessing the documents. If you are now using a content delivery platform, then you may need to provide a knowledge share to the end user plan for it. And publishing is the last step of the implementation. You have covered all the aspects now, so you have your all the planning complete and everything is done. Hooray. Finally, celebrate and recognitions. Uh, finally, uh, and much needed, uh, it is very much important. The celebration is uh, equally important as defining strategy and planning. It is not a month or two job. To migrate content, you will uh, invest significant time and energy. So do not forget to recognize efforts that you, your team, has put in uh, the collaboration, the zeal of uh, learning. So don't forget to you know, recognize all these things that the team has done so far. Have a team party and look back for a minute and enjoy the accomplishments. It continues. So believe me, once you start an initiative, it becomes business as usual, but you will still find ways to make it perfect. Every day you will see that this is there is something misses and missing and then let's uh, change it or make it in a different form. So it definitely continues. Continuous improvement. Um, after implementing, ensure all your files are in structured format because if we'll pause for say even few days or one month, then you will lag behind. So ensure whatever you author now should be in the new format. So do not pause. All your files should be in the structured format and uh, data should be business. The structured authoring should be business as usual for you. And gradually you should see the learning curve uh, to reduce because now you have spent enough amount of time uh, working in this new environment. And don't forget to share the survey again and present the updated data to the stakeholders and find out improvement areas and plan to work on them. So uh, you can also create training, internal trainings, so that if any new writers are joining, so you can train them using those training videos and training material, and it never stops. You may add new schematron rules, updates required in a style sheet, any process change needed, and continuous improvements is the key to success. So keep on improving, keep on finding ways to make it perfect, and at the same time, do not burn out. So this is um, very important. Finally, uh, Q&A. Let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shivani. Um, so we've gotten some questions in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into them, uh, if, if that's cool with everyone. No one has any qualms with that. Um, so the first one we got is, <clears throat> I love all the tasks and procedures you've identified for planning a tool migration. I'm curious how big your team was that worked on the migration. Uh, did you do did you do all this task, or did you delegate it out to various team members? If so, how did you delegate it effectively? Wonderful question. So I would say uh, it's very important. And uh, to answer your question, my team was, we were scattered in various geographical locations. And not only I was not only the member who was managing it, we have various uh, documentation managers who were handling the whole uh, you know, transition. And not just three of us uh, were uh, planning it. It's also uh, the entire team was involved. So we have given, uh, based on the interest of team members, we have delegated it to various team members. For example, someone wants have some special interest in um, organizing surveys. 
they were very much curious about that. So based on the interest, we have delegated the task to them. Someone was taking care of, uh, you know, um, getting in touch with the vendors. But there was some task that everyone took care of, like, for example, vendor evaluation. So uh, we prepared the questions and we keep prepared the test scenarios. And everyone in the team, we ran through the test cases. We uh, um, provided the scores. So these are some tasks that everyone did. But at the same time, some of the items were handled or, and um, were uh, taken care of by a few specific members. And we shared the uh, uh, scores and everything with the entire doc documentation team. So in total, we had uh, 20 plus writers. Hope I answered the question. And then Shivani, a follow-up question to that. How large was the documentation set you migrated and how long did it actually take? Wow. <laughs> so we thought it would take just one year. So that's what my learning is. It was um, uh, over 10,000 pages uh, and then uh, it took us uh, three years. So because it was in parallel with uh, the uh, deliveries, the uh, but how we initially we thought that in the first year we automated everything. But then doing a post-conversion cleanup is like a lengthy process because you have to go into each and every file. But we planned, for example, for a particular release, we need 10 documents, for example. So we prioritized and picked up those 10 documents initially and cleaned those up and cleaned those up and then uh, updated those. So it's a step-by-step -step proce procedure. You cannot clean up all the files, uh, practically saying you cannot clean up all the files in one go. So it takes time. And Shivani, was that kind of a constantly iterative process that required you uh, to to go back to your leadership team and, and kind of pitch, you know, over from one one year to three years, multiple different times for additional budget and, and essentially defend the work you were doing and, and show the value of it? Yes. So uh, uh, the budget requirement was for the initial year when we uh, asked for the budget for, you know, migrating the content for vendors, for new tools, then it becomes a business as usual, like it's a regular tool for us. And then it's a regular budget request for us. So it's not additional cost on uh, for the migration and other thing. But yes, we every time during the planning, we kept some time for the post conversion cleanup because that was like a uh, two years job. And we had, uh, for each quarter, we had like, we'll be going to migrate these 10 documents in these in this quarter. So every time we uh, planned it, and then we showed the graph for the overall post-conversion, you know, burn up, burn up gra um, graph to the stakeholders to so that they know where we are in the content migration journey and how much is left. Awesome. Uh, shifting a little bit, a different question. So my team is slowly moving to data authoring. Do you have any tips or suggestions on changing a team's attitude and mindset? Yes. So um, first of all, uh, when you author, like we, like we, uh, you know, while authoring a normal content, we ask several questions to ourselves. I mean, it's asking the question. Uh, your topic, your document is answering the questions that user needs. Now you have to shift a little bit. Is this topic, you know, then you have to think about the topic. Is this topic is answering the need of, you know, uh, of this topic? For example, if it's a concept topic, it shouldn't be answering the how question. It should be answering the contextual part of it. So uh, you may guide your team in uh, letting them know how when you are writing a specific topic, if you're writing a task topic, just try to answer the question related to how, because this is the place where you would be uh, providing the how information to the um, user. And I honestly, while we were migrating, there were several times uh, that happened, like we were thinking, is it worth it? We are like, it's, we were happily writing our content in InDesign and uh, word, why we are transitioning, is it worth it? This question will come up um, quite frequently during the migration, but believe me, once you migrate it and the entire content is in data, it's actually worth it and it saves so much of time. So yeah, stay motivated and um, try to motivate your team as well. Awesome. Uh, and then uh, next question, how do you pitch large projects like this one to say, higher up stakeholders that seem to not fully understand or necessarily care about, you know, the granular details of the project. Um, how do you mold your pitch to fit into the respective motivations of potentially various different stakeholders 
that would need to sign off on something like this? You need allies. You need, uh, you know, your uh, uh, direct report, uh, reporting manager should be, uh, you know, with you to support you. And definitely leadership support is required. But at the same time, if you present facts and figures, for example, in our context, we, we showed them, we showed the leadership on, see, this is the same content of my, this is the same content that I have at four places. I, every time you ask me to just sh make an update for a checkbox, I have to go back and change this content at six places to give you one PDF or one web help and one CHM. So this is not just one task for me, it eats up time. And if we migrate, how it will, you know, the keywords that are efficiency and how it's saving the time and time is money. If you uh, share that data with the leadership and how it will, uh, um, enhance the customer experience. I don't think so. They won't, you know, they will ignore it. So, but yes, you have to uh, share the facts, the figures, and I, I, and they will agree. Because end of the day, we have the same goal, happy customers. Right. Awesome. And then a final question here. I haven't seen any others come in. You mentioned generating reports to identify duplicates. How does your yes. team generate these reports? Do you have any examples handy? Yes, so uh, we didn't, uh, that's what my, uh, uh, if you are like have a tool or if you are going through a migration um, and if you have some vendors as well. So if, uh, for example, we did the migration, uh, we automated the migration and not on, on our own, we uh, outsourced, outsourced it. And then they had uh, a report that they generated for us, wherein we can look for the duplicate content uh, at various occurrences. And uh, we, first of all, identified the, uh, uh, for example, if uh, occurrence is at like 20 plus places. So we first of all uh, cater to that so that uh, we can reduce it and it helps um, in uh, reusing. And straightforward, you can um, uh, start with the copyright information, front covers and back cover. Great. And we actually had one more that I missed. Shivani, I apologize. Uh, uh, similar to what another uh, community member above mentioned, um, someone else is, is hoping to propose data authoring in, in their organization. Do you have any suggestions on calculating ROI, especially for localization? Uh, we haven't done much in localization. The only thing we have done so far is uh, uh, British English and American English. So, um, and that was also not that much critical, but yes, you can uh, provide uh, ROI on how you you will save the time and effort if you have single source and you need not to pay extra you know money for localization you output. So there are tools that support localization. So based on the time you will save and based on the effort you will save, uh, I think if you produce this data to your leadership, then you will be able to uh, prove it. Awesome. And it looks like that is all of the questions. Thank you so much again, uh, Shivani, for your time, for your for your expertise. And um, yep, we appreciate you uh, kind of moving on. Okay, perfect. I was I was wondering and, if, if we had and, any. <laughs> and don't wait. If you have any further question, you can drop an email to me or you can reach out to LinkedIn. Uh, I'm happy to answer.